guys and girls. Yes. Oh no, maybe you don't know where I am. I'm at the Paris Buffet Sunday brunch and this is one of the little rooms. Don't you think it's cute? One of the little rooms of the Paris Buffet. I think it's fabulous. I think I wish I had eaten here. Your own little room if you are like a large family or a group rather. Isn't that nice? Anyway, it's just the detail that made this buffet at Paris in Las Vegas really famous. The details of, of the ambience all the way there, all the details up there, and this, that is not nice at all, is it? <laughs> and, as I said, the details of the, the, the rooms. This is another little section that makes you think you are in a square, a Parisian square or a, vill or a village in France. And if I am slurring, it's not because I've had copious amounts of champagne because it was champagne brunch. No, it's because I haven't slept. And therefore my brain is working at a very, let's say 10% capacity. Okay, so forgive me guys and girls. So. If you have never seen one of my videos before, then I'm just gonna have to try and summarize things. And if you have, bear with me a little bit. So this is the buffet at the Paris Resort in Vegas. It's one of the nicest buffets to come and see. The atmosphere, as you can see, is unique. It gives you a wonderful feeling of being somewhere else. And that's sometimes really, really nice, isn't it? Rather than just the same old, same old modern restaurant or whatever. And I was actually eating in this room, which you call La Salle d'Alsace. It wasn't as cute as the other one, but just to give you an idea, you, no, you had the impression that you were in a real restaurant. And I kind of like that. Usually I eat in this larger square-like area. But I don't like these carts, you know? Years and years and years and years later, they still have them. Not many buffets have these ugly carts traveling around. Um, they have other ways of moving dirty plates. Okay, so in terms of food, let me just give you a little bit of a brief summary. And I would like to sit here as I said, say that to you because... Oh, I'll show you another little um, room. Salle de Normandie. See how cute this is? I mean, really. It is really spectacularly cute. Sometimes I don't pay enough attention to all of this. You know, you come here and I almost feel like there should be a fireplace, you know? Some of these areas are closed. What I, what I mean is that they were open hours ago and then they're shifting area from area. But the main square type area is always open. Okay, I'm gonna sit here. It's not very nice to see cars like that. So there's good and bad at the same time here. Okay, basically, in terms of food, and I really want to say that at the outset, because I don't want to sound like somebody who complains, but what it is, is that if you come from wherever we come from, uh, we, we've lived in Vancouver, BC for a long time, and then we, in other places of Canada and so forth. We're currently in Florida. Florida is pretty good actually about certain things. But generally speaking, where we come from, we don't find buffets like these. So for um, 20, 30 dollars so forth. I mean, today it's a bit expensive because it's Sunday brunch and I'll tell you if it's worth it. I'll tell you in a minute. Then, if you compare it to what you have at home, and I mean really generally speaking, some of you may come from Europe, it is a great buffet. But if you compare it with what else is on offer here in Las Vegas in terms of the buffets, then it's average at best. There were a couple of things that I really think I thought were of good quality, but generally speaking, it was I didn't I barely knew what I was eating. So you wouldn't have a culinary um, mind-blowing experience. Your taste buds would not be stimulated to the point that you think about it as you go back to your room. None of that. I kind of like this view. Eh? You probably are happy that I don't shake because I'm sitting down. Maybe I should sit down all the time. Anyway, so I just gave you this little brief introduction, or maybe not so brief, to understand that when I will criticize certain things, when I criticize 
because I'm talking in terms of what you can find in Vegas because if you go back home you find nothing at home and you think this is just heaven but there's so much better out there now I'm here with a 24 hour buffet pass and I just came from Rio that was closed oh I have so much to tell you about that you have to read top-buffet.com for that um, so I'm doing a, a buffet marathon and I've eaten a little bit of everything and maybe that's what's contributing to making me feel really strange. <laughs> okay, let's start from the Provence section where you have breads. And you know, there used to be times where I would eat tons of this stuff. Bread and butter, right? It's lovely. But now I can't because I have to make space for other things. But these are the kind of things that if you come from Europe and have not seen a buffet like this, your eyes will bulge out. And if you have been to Vegas many times before, you'll barely notice it, which is kind of a shame. Biscuits, country gravy, Lyonnais sauce, Lyonnais potatoes, scrambled eggs, and yeah, I mean the Lyonnais potatoes were flavorful because I have an I have a feeling, and I'm not sure, but I have a feeling that they may be pre-made, you know. Um, now, in terms of the pasta section, or rather in terms of this section, there was a little surprise. These fingerling potatoes here. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I can't believe I said that. It does say fingerling potatoes, but no, they're fingerling carrots, okay? Ignore what it says. They're fingerling carrots. Can you see it? fingerling carrots they were absolutely delicious really I don't really like carrots but these were really delicious now the pasta this one campi truffle cream I mean really cavatappi truffle cream pasta what it is it's short pasta with a lot of cream a lot of garlic sauce in a truffle flavor it was really nice very heavy but very nice very flavorful now the ratatouille, ratatouille at the back was totally tasteless and overcooked but again it's difficult not to overcook it in a buffet and this pasta here was pretty tasteless Mediterranean style farfalle now number one they're not farfalle farfalle means butterfly and they're not butterflies um, and Mediterranean style I suppose so but they were a little bit tasteless unfortunately let's move on Hash brown potatoes. Now I'm using this new camera. It's supposedly really, really small the way I like them, but not to anti. It's supposed to have an image stabilization mechanism. So let me know if it works. But I don't know how to operate it very well yet. It's not even that. It's just that it's so small. I don't know how to hold it. Now pork and bean cassoulet and potatoes and hash brown potatoes pretty average run of the mill nothing wrong nothing great now we've got blueberry syrup because remember it's um sunday brunch blueberry syrup maple syrup raisin bread french toast now in terms of the french toast i was very disappointed it's a huge amount of bread too big Oh, this noise! Isn't that awful? It's a huge, it's a huge amount of bread, really big, and uh, it wasn't well cooked, in my opinion. You can mash potatoes. I've had better here. These ones were pretty run of the mill. Not much flavor there. A lot of butter or oil or whatever. But roasted mushrooms again. The flavor was a bit missing. Um, sweet potatoes and rice. Now I'm going to show you the rotisserie if I can it's always a very busy section oh there you go i can show you okay so that was prime there was uh, prime rib well what i see is roast beef and turkey that's all i see roast beef and turkey Here we have steamed vegetables. I'm not one for steamed vegetables. I mean, I love vegetables, but they have to have some sort of flavor. So I'm afraid I skipped them, okay? Forgive me. <laughs> Rotisserie chicken and bacon, swimming in oil. It was all quite a run of the meal. It wasn't really that great. 
chicken in red wine sauce and cream spinach. It really is not, it, it, a long time ago it used to have that oomph, you know, that's, that's something that made you think, oh yeah, I want to go to the Paris buffet, but this time, and last time too, so you know, nothing special. Now because this is uh, Sunday brunch, obviously you're going to have a few other things than usual, chilled shrimp and cocktail sauce and then you have smoked salmon lemon wedges which are really a good idea when you get club soda put some lemon or squeeze some lemon juice in it it's really going to be helping you with the not so healthy food that you may be eating uh, mussels and you know you come here you have to have mussels and clams and not labeled rice. The rice is not labeled. I guess you can work it out that it's right. You feel free to tell, to ask what it is and what ingredients have been used. They may not know, but, but at least you ask and they can always go back and tell you. Cheese, you know, I remember, I remember the Paris Parfait when they used to have the most incredible French cheeses. Well, those days are gone. <laughs> Eggs Benedict, the it looks fine, but the one I had was the bread was a bit too dry, so it didn't. I didn't get that feel that of this. I didn't get the feel of the sauce. Then uh, tilapia. It was well cooked, but it was um, completely tasteless. Now, I had a crepe here, and I don't think it was well made. But I have to tell you, it really depends on who's making it because last time it was delicious. Now the good thing about the crepe station here is that you can have sweet crepes and savory crepes. And last time I had a caprese savory, crepe, savory crepes and it was crepe and it was absolutely perfectly made. This time I had uh, ham and cheese. I feel sorry for the ham and I, you know, the poor animal, and I feel sorry even for the poor animal that gave that cheese because it was so not well done. It was practically undercooked. And a lot of it, the, the portions were really generous. I have to tell you, the portions were really generous. But what I had, and you know, when it's savory, you have to cook it, right? It was very undercooked. Now, in terms of the sweet crepe, then obviously you may not have that problem, though it's really nice to have really hot crepes and you know if in terms of sweet Nutella crepes you have this the liquid you know of, of the of the creams and the chocolate hot and steamy inside that's my opinion so this time the crepe sta station was very disappointing but it really really in that respect depends on who's making it because some people really know how to make it having said that there should be and there isn't quality control with regards to what how the food comes out and there isn't simple because I think in buffets with buffets you really have to have strict quality control I noticed that it's, they slip up very easily now in terms of the the salad section or oh, some more some more cheeses I meant to say and there is a um, spicy cheese as well kind of like um, not jalapeno cheese, but something like that. I can't think of the name right now, but it was quite nice. The rest is pretty straightforward, average stuff, but it, they tasted like real cheese anyway. Beet salad, pre-made. Bean and pea salad. Well, I mean, nobody's into that, but I had the this, which of course has no label. It's a regular lettuce, you know, pre-tossed. It was nice, although I think it was far too much oil and it was not olive oil. So it was, I think, this kind of tasteless canola oil, which probably was not even non-GMO, which is a shame. But salavi and then spinach salad, you know, it was, it was generously made in terms of flavors. I think maybe a little bit too much salt, maybe. But all in all, it was okay. Now, the sushi I didn't have because it doesn't look really that inviting to me. It looks just like a lot of, a lot of rice and... Uh, more sushi but more rice rather in my opinion but I had the seaweed salad and you know with a lot of sesame seeds inside and I have to tell you that it was really nice I had two portions of that 
And you know how fussy I am, right? Now here they used to have another section, but now they've closed it off and it's become a restaurant, part of a restaurant. Anyway, it's no longer so. So in terms of size, the in terms of size, the um, this buffet has become a bit smaller than what it used to be like in the good old days, unfortunately. Which means that the lineups are still significant, but they weren't too terrible, too bad when I, when it was my turn. I think I lined up only for 10 minutes, which is nothing really. It used to be you could line up for an hour. Those were the days, right? Minestrone, melted butter. Now these were really lovely. These were really flavorful. Now forgive me, I'm a bit too tired in my mind and uh, not having slept and I don't know what they're called but and I won't touch anything so don't freak out. <laughs> I'm not touching anything. Um, but these are really flavorful and if any of you know the name, please let me know. I really love them. They were really flavorful. And then you have... Um, I think this is, uh, I think it's green and it has no label. I think this is an onion soup and this one I don't know. Let me see if I can show you. Oh yeah, corn, corn soup, but really, since it's been like this for hours, I think they could and should label it. Well, because I mean, some people may know, other people may not know, although you know what you could do? You could uh, perhaps... Uh, Try a little bit, try a little bit of everything, or what you don't know if you like or not, or maybe you're tempted towards a particular dish. Try it, and then decide if you want more. I think it's a little bit like your eyes sometimes eat more than your mouth, and I'm talking about myself as well. And the best thing to do would be that of trying a little bit of everything, and then you go for what you really like. Otherwise, you end up leaving all the food on the plate, which is kind of a shame if you think about it. Now here, this is the salad that you have to prepare yourself. It used to be so much more luscious. It used to have artichokes, uh, Greek olives, pitted, and lots of other delightful things. But it really is run of the mill right now. Added things, you have your, you know, onions, onions, crouton, parmesan cheese, bacon bits, you know, the same. And then here you have cut, um, fruit, melon and pineapple and the good thing about this is that it's real fruit in some and if you don't know if you've never been to Vegas in some cheap buffets um, the fruit is not even real it comes from a can you know so it's not fresh and that's bad at least this is fresh and no added sugar which is nice now because it was Sunday brunch and it costed a little bit more I think it was around 30 or 35 dollars um, then you have obviously crab legs. Go ahead, not having any anymore. <laughs> there you go. And I think we've already, I've already shown you this section. I think this is it, actually. But what I want to show you, what I've left for last, is the sweet section, and it's very small. Now, in terms of, as I approach the sweet section, I wanted to tell you that, uh, surprisingly, the coffee, which in this buffet you have to ask the server for. So there is no self-serve drinks area here, unlike other buffets. And if you want to know which ones have self-serve, I have, I talk about it on top-buffet.com, where I review Las Vegas buffets and this time I'm going to review buffets that I haven't reviewed in a long long time and some that I have never reviewed in terms of video so watch out and I promise you that tomorrow I'll be much more upbeat I'm not I'm just tired and a little bit drunk but not through alcohol just lack of sleep now these ones look great don't they it's not there's no label so you're gonna have to work it out yourself so I, there's no way of saying if it's sugar-free or not, but usually the sugar-free options are marked as such. Creme caramel. I mean, it's nice enough, but it isn't mouth-watering. It isn't mouth-watering, unfortunately. See? Like, no, 
no labeling. Pop. You give an idea. Carrot cake. Using, my head was like sweating. That's a carrot cake there on my right. <laughs> Toppings for ice cream. Now, if you're from Europe, don't expect European ice cream. That would be labeled as gelato. When they just say ice cream, it means some sort of yogurt type dispenser. See, I show you. See? There you go. You see exactly how it's made. And then you top it up or you don't top it up. What are you laughing at? like falling up. I love it. I love it when people do the work for me. <laughs> So you got vanilla and chocolate, really standard. You give, even Bellagio has this. I, I don't think it's anything special, but seems to be popular. Now you see, it's a little bit miserable, right? It's a bit miserable. I don't know why it's like this. Every time I come here, it's like this. So I cannot say that it's just a one-off. I think this, this dessert section is a little depressing. I mean, does it invite you? Maybe it does. Maybe it's just me being tired today. But I will show you dessert sections that will blow your mind. And I didn't like the fact that they, they had no labels. So I know that some of you will want sugar-free sections. And I would not know. But you know what you do. You just ask. Ask. And then you've got your macaroons. Oops. Not me. Can you see it? All right. And I think this is it. This is just, um, you know, I mean, this is um, European style, but it doesn't taste anything like it. And tiramisu, which could be good, and the rest, brownies and so forth. So, you know, I mean, let's face it, it's fine. It has what everybody expects and more from a buffet. Now, the, the 24 hour buffet pass costs me $55 including taxes, so it's $49 plus tax, $55 including taxes, and that with that I can go for 24 hours at any of their buffets, the Caesars Entertainment Group or whatever they're going to be called now because I think, I think, but correct me if I'm wrong, they have been bought by another company. So, I don't know what's going to happen, but I have the feeling that right now I accept that it's low season for them, but... I have a feeling that there's a bit of neglect. This is a feeling and it could just be temporary because this is not a high paying time. It means that this is low season and, and rooms have been either comped, plus of course the resort fee that you have to pay, or they are relatively um, affordable. But look at the nice detail. Eh? So. With the buffet pass, I have a section on top-buffet.com. Talk, I talk about the buffet pass and the strategies to maximize the buffet pass, maximize the buffet pass and what you should do to do so and not to kill yourself in the process because you really have to really be smart. To me, the 24-hour buffet pass is more an experience because you cannot eat for 24 hours. Simple. Um, but if you actually pick up the best that each buffet has to offer, and of course if you go to Bacanal and Rio, you'll have more than that, you'll really enjoy the experience. And I talk about that on top-buffet.com. Top I apologize for my slurring the words, and I promise you tomorrow I'll be as right as rain. See you. Bye-bye uh, from, bye -bye from Jules at top-buffet.com. Bye-bye.